I call this Eugenics now. But as I started this, it was about my anger at normalization, I guess I used to call it. It was a bunch of things I found out, though. Tools that were used to create this. Now, when I say normalization, it was this myth that people are like on a, a bar, a line, and there's like 1 to 10, and normalcy is at 5. And if you drift one way or the other, you're abnormal, and you need to be corrected. The problem with this whole thing is first you all first of all you have to decide what is normal and that's a rather arbitrary decision this subject of normalization I found actually as I studied into it saying what I was writing down what I was going to discuss and how I knew my anger was there at the beginning but I didn't understand fully the details to it and that came down to certain tools in this evil toolbox of human manipulation and I was able to lump these kind of into uh, certain groups. Eugenics, behavioral sciences, psychology, specifically Freudian, and a pack of other little lies that kind of help glue these things together. We'll just call those the other lies. Because none of them are a complete study on their own. Mostly because most of them got disproved during the time. The first three still exist, and they're still held as valued things. I disagree. We're going to first time here just to deal with eugenics today because it's too complicated, I found out. We're going to hit behavioral science and psychology and the other lies later on. Hold on. Much like the racism rant, this one gets a little long-winded. As I looked more and more into it, I got more and more angry than I already was. The origins of eugenics is to prove racism and advance a... Well, in the long term, it was a chemical-based system of take this and this will get you back to middle. Take this pill and this will get you back to middle. You're psychotic, you need to take these. Things like that, where they just basically are punishing you for not behaving normal. Used to be they just pull your teeth sometimes. That'll make you normal. Normalization has been used to lock up distance. No trial. The state just decides with a doctor's notice that this person's crazy. And they put him away. Why? Because he doesn't fit the norm as assigned by the state. Behavioral science is a huge living lie that has led to a chemical addict society where you buy pills to be normal. I'm not saying that people cannot be motivated by basic programming of praise and punishment. It does work. But the same methods can be used to create a serial killer or a child molester. To me, they're pretty much the same thing. So the fact that it can be done and does work does not in any way make it right. Generations before us were programmed, oops, I mean educated, with this very method. Method nowadays used by cults and other things. The grandparents might talk about it, maybe, and uh, Warriors might see it in some old films. The memorization of lines, facts, as they call them, or lessons, used to be repeated to drive into their minds of the students like mantras, or cults, or religious groups, whatever you call them. Use memorization of mantras. These are the wasted masses of, write these lines on the board, and if you do it enough times, you'll learn. Like Bart, at the beginning of every Simpsons cartoon. No wonder these people create a cold war to establish peace. These three tools I mentioned earlier are related. Madman tools to an insane doctor bag. Mentioned mental illness is real. I'm not discounting that in this. And some are not getting proper help because others are not ill at all, but are getting help. Standards based on normalcy as to how they fit in society, not what is actually true to them. I'm not saying we should let serial killers run around. But because someone wants to collect things, is it necessarily an obsession? Does it bring them pleasure? What's the problem? I guess the problem is they're not taking pills to take care of it. But to focus on this time, eugenics. The idea of eugenics is to prove and produce the better human beings, the super soldiers, as they, as they believed existed since Plato suggested selective mating 
to produce a guardian class. Not too different than breeding gladiators for better gladiators. This guy's tough. He should make tough children. The dark side of it is the idea of eugenics to decrease the birth of inferior human beings has existed at least since William Goodell, an American abolitionist living in 1829 to 1894, advocating the castration in Spain of the insane. However, the term eugenics to be described as a modern concept of improving the quality of human beings was born in the world as originally developed by Francis Galton. Galton had read his half-cousin Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, which sought to explain the development of plants and animal species and desired to apply it to humans. Galton believes that desirable traits were hereditarily based upon biographical studies. Should mention Darwin strongly disagreed with his interpretations of this book. And he's someone I tend to find, I, I really look close to what he said on his field of sciences. In 1883, one year after Darwin's death, Galton gave his research the name eugenics. Knowing, I guess, that Darwin wouldn't be there to speak out against it, throughout its recent history, eugenics has remained a controversial subject. Or I should even say, concept. Eugenics became an academic discipline at many colleges and universities and received funding from many sources. Organizations formed to win public support and modify opinion towards responsible eugenic values and parenthood, included in the British Eugenics Education Society of 1907 and the American Eugenics Society of 1921, both sought support from leading clergymen and modified their message to meet religious ideals. Three international eugenic conferences presented a global venue for eugenists with meetings in 1912 in London in 1921 and 32 in New York City. Eugenic policies were first implemented in the early 1900s in the United States. It has roots in France, Germany, Great Britain, and the United States. Later 1920s and 30s, the eugenics policy of sterilization certain mental patients was implemented in other countries, including Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Japan, and Sweden. I have to admit it as an American, uh, the rest of the world, when the United States screws up on something, please don't copy it. <laughs> the scientific reputation of eugenics finally started to decline in the 1930s, a time when Ernst Rudin used eugenics as justification for the racial policies of Nazi Germany. In addition to being practiced in a number of countries, eugenics was internationally organized through the International Federation of Eugenics Organizations. Its scientific aspects were carried on throughout research bodies such as Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Anthropology, Human Heredity, and Eugenics, the Cold Spring Harbor Carnegie Institute for Experimental Evolution, and the Eugenics Records Office. Its political aspect involved advocating laws allowing the pursuit of eugenic objectives, such as sterilization laws. Its moral aspects included rejection of the doctrine that all human beings are born equal, and redefining morality purely in terms of genetic fitness. Its racist elements, including pursuit of a pure Nordic race or Aryan genetic pool, and the eventual elimination of less fit races. Please uh, <laughs> look back at the racist one I already did about how I feel about the racist thing, racism. And later on I'll explain that uh, there's only one race, Homo sapien. And everything from then are chihuahuas and German shepherds and poodles. But none of them are as strong as the original to breed. They are all just been sequestered in little areas through breeding through choices by the females for who they would be with and who they would mate with, as well as socially shaped and environmentally, like if they lived in a valley. These things are what created these false races. Okay? Bunch of different colored homo sapiens did not come walking out from Africa and spread in different directions and land. No. There was one. It went out like original dog, 
and spread out, creating a bunch of little subspecies dogs. They're not separate races. But this whole eugenics thing is built around this falsity. But I'll go more into that later, too. A Lebensborn birth house in Germany, created with intention of raising birth rate of Aryan children from extramarital relations of racially pure and healthy parents. As a social movement, eugenics reached its greatest popularity in the early decades of the 20th century. At this point in time, eugenics was practiced around the world and was promoted by governments and influential individuals and institutions. Many countries enacted various eugenic policies and programs, including genetic screening, birth control, promoting differential birth rates, marriage restrictions, segregation, both racial segregation and segregation of the mentally ill from the rest of the population, compulsory sterilization, forced abortions or forced pregnancies, and genocide. Most of these policies were later regarded as coercive and restrictive. Aww. And now fewer jurisdictions implementing policies that are explicitly labeled as eugenic or unequivocal eugenically in substance. The method of implementing eugenics varied by country. However, some early 20th century methods involve identifying and classifying individuals and their families including the poor, mentally ill, blind, deaf, developmentally disabled, promiscuous women, homosexuals, and racist groups, such as Roma and Jews in Nazi Germany, as degenerates or unfit. The segregation or institutionalization of such individuals or groups, their sterilization, euthanasia, and their mass murder. The practice of euthanasia was carried out on hospital patients in the Acton T4 centers, such as Hartham Castle. Eugenics also had a place in medicine. In his lecture, Darwinism, Medical Progress and Eugenics, Carl Pearson said that everything concerning eugenics fell into the field of medicine. He basically placed the two words as equivalents. He was supported in part by the fact that Francis Galton, the father of eugenics, also had medical training. Once again, Darwin beliefs on his own studies negated the central core of eugenics. They all somehow came out of it with what he said was not true and decided to keep building. Eugenic policies have been conceptually divided into two categories. Positive eugenics is aimed at encouraging reproduction among the genetically advantaged, for example, the reproduction of the intelligent and healthy and the successful, possibly approach include financial and political stimuli, targeted demographic analysis inside the egg, transplants, and then cloning. The movie Gattaca provides a fictional example of positive eugenics done voluntarily. Oh, I found this movie terrifying because I watched people in the theater and they were not affected nearly enough to what I saw being shown. They were enthralled by it. Negative eugenics aimed to eliminate, through sterilization or segregation, those deemed physically, mentally, or morally undesirable. This included abortion, sterilization, and other methods of family planning. Both positive and negative eugenics can be coercive. Abortion for fit women for example, was illegal in Nazi Germany. John Enton claims that eugenics simply means good genes, and using it as synonym for genocide is an all-too-common distortion of this social history of genetics policy of the United States. According to Entine, eugenics developed out of the progressive era and not Hitler's twisted final solution. The final factor for me that both negative and positive announces that they know what are good genes and what are bad genes. I would probably disagree. And I don't find any reason any of their opinions would be more valid than mine. So if I was in that position, I would choose. And I bet they would be afraid. They can't do a test. They can't just take everyone, judge them, chop the middle, 
and say all the rest are useless. It doesn't work that way. What if, as far as we don't know, one of the two edges was actually the direction that humanity would survive with through genetics, and the other one wasn't. And the middle was no use either. Without knowing the future, we cannot know what is good and bad. And good and bad, at best, can be put as healthy and damaged. We used to know that getting a 12-year-old bride and having sex with her was all right and good. But high mortality rate of childbirth for both, both mother and child alone proves that this was never all right. Just because society says it's all right did not make it so. If it kills them or leads to more deaths than if you'd waited, then it was probably not right. But they would have judged that as norm. Maybe someone who would marry a 40-year-old would be locked away into a prison. How would people feel now about that? The public does not have the power or the knowledge to determine bad or good. We can only hope to behave in a way that we don't regret in the end. Regardless, those in 100 years from now will look back and be embarrassed by our actions, or maybe hopefully not. I know when I look back 100 years, I'm embarrassed. Let's please, hopefully, do better. That's all we could hope. Thank you. Look at my hair.